The Minnesota Vikings, a team that has honestly kind of wasted some golden years here with their injuries. Now, it's not like they chose to be injured, but a team that when healthy is very, very talented. However, that's kind of the problem with this team is they are very injury prone, especially on the defense. Uh, of course, one of the first names we have to talk about in general is Kirk Cousins, a guy that has been disrespected for I don't even know how long. I've said it before. If Kirk Cousins was on the Niners for the last like half decade, they probably win several Super Bowls. I'm just going to be honest with you. He is good. People talk about his primetime performances and not winning in primetime, but you kind of need a defense for that, especially with the injuries. The Minnesota Vikings defense has been terrible. Of course, looking at his ratings, his normal dev, he's only an 80 overall yet. 89 accuracy, 89 medium, 90 short accuracy, 88 throw on the run, 98 play action. It's almost like this guy's really good or something, but he's not a flashy enough name to get the credit. What are these ratings? They're insane, yet he's only an 80. You know, like it's, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about that. But of course, Dalvin Cook, one of the best in the game. Jefferson, one of the best in the game. Thielen, one of the best in the game. O-line has been improving. Tight end, who knows, honestly, just injury prone. And when he does play, he doesn't seem to be that great. Pass rush. Daniil Hunter and Zedaria Smith could be the best edge rush duo once again, if healthy, in 2021, and there's uh, 2021, 2022, um, you know, they didn't really play a whole lot in 2021, but they could be lethal. Daniel Hunter, one of the best in the league. Zadarius, before the injury, one of the best in the league. And there's some really good new edge rush duos in the league, you know, plenty of them. And I still think if they're healthy, they could be the best out of all of them. Of course, Kendricks is great. He is a literal leader captain of that defense Harrison Smith of course slowing down a little bit but still really good uh cornerback that has been the problem in Minnesota for I don't even know like decades at this point like Antoine Winfield is like the best corner they've had uh and even then you know he never really had like a number two it was always just him uh they definitely need uh, you know, one of these corners to step up. Dantzler definitely is on the right track. And Andrew Booth seems like a solid pick. Patrick Peterson, how healthy will be he he be? And you know, even when he is healthy, he's, I mean, you know, he's, he's kind of not great anymore, right? Lewis Seen, obviously another really high potential guy. And then defensive line, uh, Harrison Phillips is, you know, he's a guy that's not really being talked about a lot, especially even for the Vikings fans. He could be a huge addition. Their interior is weak and... He was decent with the Bills. Of course, they have a great unit. It seems like no matter what their roster looks like, their defense has been good for some time now. But he could be a big uh, addition to this team, of course. As far as talking about rebuilds go, Phillips may not be here long. Armin Watts obviously won't be. Dalvin will be looked to be replaced. Cornerbacks, maybe we get away with Booth and Dantzler, but we'll see. Uh, Asamoah could be good long-term. Kendricks, I can't imagine he lasts that long, despite the fact that a lot of these guys we are stuck on contract with. You know, 30 years old, superstars. It's not the youngest. Of course, same with Thielen. Same with Harrison Smith. I don't know if we mentioned his name. Kirk Cousins. I mean, unless we physically boost him, depending on how he plays, he may be gone. You know, I'm just saying. So I think because of his age and because he's actually pretty good in real life, uh, I think we might actually treat this as one of those, like, adjust their ratings as they go kind of thing. Like, if Kirk Cousins plays really well, I might bump him to a star or a superstar right out the gate and fix his ratings. So we'll see how that goes. So this first year, as with how good the talent is and the age, is a very important one. Damn, had a pretty nice breakout early with Lewisine, and it did not work out. Speaking of working out, you there watching now. I can tell you've been working out. Look at those muscles. Why don't you put those to use and maybe leave a like and subscribe? <laughs> I'm trying to get new ideas every day. I, I I didn't script it or anything. I just thought of it, and I was like, we'll throw that out there, baby. Armin Watts with a breakout. I honestly don't even know how old he is. He's 26. I'm sorry, but I really don't care. I mean, we'll take it. We'll take the progress, but are you effing me in the kidding? I mean, he's got 82 power move now, which is pretty cool, actually, but... Ugh, I don't know about that now. Like, on pretty reasonable sliders, I think we're on, like, 135 or so, 140. I don't know if it's physically possible to make him a god, you know? Which is why we're talking about potentially boosting Kirk Cousins illegally here. All right, so our re-signings, there are a lot of, like, you know, kind of one-year names that you wouldn't really expect to worry too much about. 
but also a few guys here that you do worry about that you don't want to lose. So, uh, starting with Jordan Hicks, not going to happen. As far as real life goes, not bad value uh, at all. Actually, really good value. Uh, and could be a guy that, you know, take a couple years down the line. But once again, it's a Madden rebuild. As much as I want to keep it as realistic as possible for real life, Madden rebuild, it's not worth it. Patrick Peterson, not worth it. Dalvin Tomlinson, maybe. Don't even know how good he is, to be honest. We're going to be looking at the D-line, but we have so many players to fill there. I, I don't think we could replace, like, every single player. As you can see, Armin Watts was on the list. Alexander Madison, I think, is a guy you let go because in real life, I don't know if I would see him as a starter, but I think he's too talented to ask for a contract that low. And, of course, you see the resign interest is red anyways. And, uh, you know, somebody would be probably willing to, you know, grab him as, I wouldn't say a starter maybe, but as depth, of course, Irv Smith could be a problem. I don't really want to pay him that much. Based on how he's played, I'd be willing to give him like a 3 or 27 which is pretty good for him, but, you know, 9 mil per year for a guy that's red interest is usually not something that goes. Shannon Sullivan, not bad in real life, but not great in game, to be honest. Like, you know, I mean, he's, you know, he's okay. And then Garrett Bradbury, I, I don't really like his, uh, like, build. I think... You know, speaking of Vikings, which we'll have our online franchise maybe up sometime by the end of the week. Hopefully, we haven't started yet, but we're kind of planning on to. It kind of depends if I want to play preseason games and actually like record and edit them. Um, but maybe at the end of the week, this would be a guy that I don't even know if I would go for in that franchise. Like, it's his age is a bit of a problem. Like, if I could try to get him on a one year deal just to like have someone there that's still kind of developable, but draft someone, you know, I would I'd be down. But he's clearly not. And, of course, with Armin Watts, he's not a bad player because we got that dev up, but he's still so, so far away. I just don't just don't think it's worth it. Plus, backups in the game really do nothing. 2.8 yards per carry. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? That's just useless. And I have him as the power back, and he still just doesn't get any burn. We're really about to lose our playoff spot to the Bears. Oh, we won. But we lost to the Bears earlier in the season, so it's like, you know. Uh, but... We do make the playoffs. Of course, I didn't change the uh, the schemes or anything like that for these rebuilds going forward. Even if I know the playbook is dog awful, I'm going to at least for the first three seasons, hopefully, uh, just run their base playbook, base scheme, everything. Unless, of course, there's some sort of glitch. I think there's like one or two teams that are still stuck on like the wrong defensive scheme, I believe. But obviously, this is not one of them. Let's take a look at the official stats. Let's see. Kirk Cousins. Oh, Kirk. Please, I really, really needed you to be good here, dude. Like, that's just not a good season. Like, that's just, this is awful. Unless we have, like, 30 rushing touchdowns, which we did have a lot, but not that much. I'm telling you, scheme matters too much in this game. It's just, it's so powerful. Like, we literally do better with this team if the scheme is different. And it's just, it's disgusting that that's literally the one reason why it does that. Like, Dalvin's numbers sucked. The receiving numbers sucked. And now there's going to be some people like, 1,300 yards receiving, 1,300 yards rushing. It's like most teams have, like, an 1,800-yard receiver or a 1,500-yard running back. We have neither. You know? It's like, come on, man. In sim, at least, obviously. I'm not talking about real life. Uh, was that Phillips with seven, actually? I've looked at this number ten times, and I've finally only seen it there. Greg Joseph was okay. We did make the playoffs. And, of course, that's pretty spectacular because EA absolutely hates the Vikings. Uh, and we did not get a single award. A couple of Cowboys awards for guys that you just wouldn't expect either. Uh, but, once again, in the playoffs early on, probably a bad thing because, once again, Kirk Cousins isn't apparently the guy based on his uh, season. So, I, I just don't know. Uh, but, yeah, let's, uh, let's inevitably lose to this Buccaneers team that's probably going to face the Chiefs in the Super Bowl and win. All right, going to the end of the game. 7-0. We do bounce back with three. Defense stops them. We get seven. 14-10. Still a close game. Nice. Defense gives us the lead pretty much with the short field. 21-17 in the second half. 24-21. Giving them a good fight. This is a team that I... Th oh, and I think we got the stop, the pick or something. This is a team that I would say is better than the Vikings. So this would be... Holy, Jalen Rager's a god. Holy crap. 79-yard touchdown. That's going to be the dagger. And then the whole narrative is going to be, Greeny Demons lets him to... Guys, 
You're really going to give Brady that kind of time? Thankfully, he didn't have enough room because the punt was insane. But yeah, the Brady It's like, really? Brady, five touchdowns. I mean, I guess I kind of actually. Uh, of course, look at the numbers for Rager and... And Thielen, that's pretty insane. Uh, looking at the sack totals, a lot actually from both teams. Harrison Smith, the GOAT with interception. One interception equals one upgrade point. If I didn't have auto upgrade on, I would actually hold this for his inevitable hard regression. But yeah, screw that. And the Packers, a team that I don't know. We definitely lost one game against them, but I don't know if we lost both. 84 overall to their 86. I mean, there's definitely some sides that uh oh that's kind of filthy it's not good for us in theory that is nice that is like could you really ask for a better game like you really couldn't um but yeah they do have some things that are better than us and then obviously we have some things that are better than them but here we are starting out with a really good drive by green bay but no score then they get another one and they do score we get seven they get seven touchdown from us offenses are really just going to work here in the snow with no issue Huge drive by Green Bay, and I think that might be it. Down 10. Come on. We need more than a field goal there. Yeah, we are down way too much. Oh, nice touchdown, though. Down by 7. Defense. Oh, my God. I wish Green Bay's freaking offense was this clutch in real life. Uh, we're going to come out here and look. Three tight ends. Green Bay really going to play the old McCarthy strat of just throwing the game away. And that's a really good play by Harrison. There's a chance. We're coming in for Nwangwu. It was funny. I actually don't even know who the Packers real life punter is. We literally throw away punters more than the Kardashian family does basketball players. Like, I don't want to come in and win, especially since I don't feel that great about my chances of it. But at the same time, the game's just going to waste all that clock. Look at that dot. I really want to use a different quarterback than Kirk, but honestly, year one, is there really going to be a better option in our franchise? I really don't think there is. But do I want there to be a better option? I want to develop players. I don't want to just win to win, you know? Get a good draft pick, get a good quarterback, but, you know? Do worry about that throw power from Kirk, and I ain't gonna lie. Rager wearing number nine is a bit disgusting. Look at Kirk on the run. Stay there. Easy. Good blocking, though. Green Bay, I mean, Preston's shown some, like, life. He's, like, up and down. But it is kind of just like Rashawn Gary on the edge. And then, you know, something like a lot of the plays, you know, Clark's not even in. That's a little predetermined, but it is also a dot. I'm not going to fight that. Down to the two. I actually wonder if the AI could get in there. Pretty good drive from us. Obviously, we're on all pro, so it's not like the hardest thing in the world to deal with. But still, it's something. And, of course, maybe scored too early. Did score... Did Green Bay score a touchdown? That was the biggest waste of time ever. That drive felt so good, and yet they just end up winning anyways. Well, that was a waste of time. Yeah, Rodgers clutching up. Sure. Especially in the in the play. Sure, dude. Of course, Sammy Watkins and Dobbs looking insane. Thielen was pretty good. Smith was okay. Jefferson was okay. Dalvin, obviously, pretty solid. Defensively, once again, talking about that pass rush. They actually had the edge in that one. Kicking was perfect both sides. You know, it was just a close game between two good teams in the division. And we barely lost, that's all I can say. Once again, for a rebuild, not probably the best start. But, you know, we got deep, I suppose. I don't know. I think this, like, sometimes I like. there's a decent bit of times where I just forget to show you guys, like, the schedules or whatever, even the playoff schedule, like, if we win or do well. But I think the fact that we just went 9-8 and eight and made it to the divisional round year one with Kirk Cousins sucking... I think proves that I never script anything because this is the worst start possible for a rebuild. Like, you could literally not ask for a worst start. I can't make the argument that Kirk should go up in dev and keep ready ratings. Uh, you know, I can't. Dalvin drops in dev, apparently. Um, Thielen drops in dev, apparently. We have a bad draft pick, so we can't grab QB. The whole damn team just dropped. Bruh, like... This regression, regression thing is pissing me off. And it's like, I get it. Technically, maybe they are, you know, deserving of a, a dev drop. But it's like, if they play really well next season, they're not going to get a dev up, you know? Like, their chance of getting a dev up the next season can be, like, slim to none. We'll keep Daniil. We'll keep Harrison Smith. Zadarius, I'll allow to drop off in dev. Cook, I will not. Thielen, obviously not. He put over 1,000 yards up as the number two. It's just annoying because that slider still doesn't effing work, and it effing pisses me off. 
PG-13, baby. But yeah, not a single dev up for a team that, you know... Oh, no, one dev up for Asamoah, which is... Yeah, it's all right. We'll take it. It's not not bad, actually. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go to free agency. We're going to be losing a few players here, but not players that we can't live without. I offered Dalvin a one-year eight, uh, Tomlinson, that is, and he said no. So free agents, I would imagine we have to pay someone like Jefferson very soon. So I don't want to spend more than like 15 20 if we want to spend it all. Uh, quarterback, no. Running back, no. Wide receiver, no. Tight end, maybe, but we did just pay someone, so probably not. Left tackle, no. Left guard, maybe, because you can move him to center. Center, yes. A two-year 20 for Eric McCoy is not bad, actually. And he is really good comparatively to what we had. Although you can see the Dolphins are really in the hunt here for him. Really wouldn't want to spend too much on alignment. Because once again, it's not even about real life, but it's about like what matters in Sim. I don't know how much a center matters, but I'd be willing to pay a two-year was a 21. That's not terrible. Uh, every other lineman position is fine. Uh, DT, once again, those kind of positions are needed Javon Hargrave actually seems like a very likely candidate for a team like uh, Minnesota. I'm surprised they actually haven't made a trade attempt. I think in real life they will uh, have rotations for him to be in a lot anyways. Well, I suppose uh, you know he's technically the starter, so Jordan Hicks to be in a decent bit. But as far as like Javon Hargrave, they'll definitely use him a ton, so I don't even know if they'll let him go anyways. I can't afford him. Yeah, I offered you a one-year eight, and now what? There's no market for you. Now you're getting less. You're getting a one-year five, Punky. Please come back. I'll, I'll refuse you. I won't call you Punky anymore. He's not a Punky. <laughs> look, look at that face. <laughs> Six three three twenty. Please, I'm sorry. <laughs> I meant to say Pookie. All right, so we'll be left with about 22 mil, which is kind of what I was hoping to have. Let's see if we get any of them. Uh, and we do not get greedy. We do not get Dalvin, which is fine. Uh, of course, Eric McCoy and Rodrigo Blinkenship. Not bad, actually. And then, surprisingly, Greedy is still here. Our offer is not terrible. I offered him, like, a one-year 15. I'll bump that to a one-year 17. A one-year? Four-year. Four Which, of course, is quite a bit, actually. And Greedy ended up uh, caving in. Not bad. Had to do both of the... Uh, the evaluation thing, so we're doing them none left now. Justin Jefferson. Um, yeah, fifth-year option for sure. I'm not how, sure how this is going to work in real life, though. I thought there was talks like he doesn't want to play on it or something. I don't know how that works. Though. Like, Isn't that like kind of the whole point is the fifth-year option is like, I wouldn't say undeniable, but it's, you know, it's like something you just deal with. So we have pick 26 with a quarterback that is aging, and I don't know how long-term he'll be. Quarterback for us, though, probably not going to be an option here, as I imagine they're all going to be gone. And there are two, but they're round two to... Th oh, hey, whoa. Round three to four projected, but he's got A's across the board. Are you sure? Good throw power? Are you sure, though? See, the thing is, they're definitely locked in 2023, but not 2024. I really didn't think I was going to be taking QB here. Um, we do have other options, like... Uh, you know, we, we can still get, like, Roy, maybe. Eh, I really want Roy here instead of a damn QB. Um, Coburn. Could be our best option to get a QB. But he's a 3-4 to four projection. And if he was actually good, would he not be gone already? He's got all those A's. It's not too early, either. I'm gonna grab him. Tyler Van Dyke. And he is hidden. Okay, so, based on the fact that he's hidden, based on the fact that he has 91 throw power and all those A's, I think... It was a good pick. The crazy part is we're at 26, and this is, like, not quite, but it's kind of getting, like, Packers with Jordan Love, Rodgers vibes. It really is. Like, we, we were kind of close to making it to the championship round, and, you know, we, we really need to kind of, like, a, a reload here, yet we went QB protecting the future rather than kind of going all in with what we have. But at the same time, it's one of those situations where I just feel like, you know, we're getting a very good value player, so why not? Jervon Dexter, I really want Roy, but Jervon Dexter might be our best uh, bet. And we obviously need D-line. We skipped to our pick because uh, I, I forgot we have Wooden as well. And, I mean, we could realistically replace everyone, even Phillips, but I actually don't know if I want Dexter now. 
I kind of want Jared Patterson and move uh, McCoy to guard or something. Could also go wide receiver. Don Travion Wicks giving me mad Justin Jefferson vibes here as well. Very fast. Even better than him probably. Um, We only need like one lineman though. Could this be a trade down? I'm going to trade down actually. Don't have a fourth round pick either, so it kind of makes sense. Want to go to like mid third. We're going to go with the Saints, 71 and 103, plus that seventh round pick to move back, which is actually a pretty good trade because you're only moving back like, what, like 10 spots, which should easily land us our players. Actually, we might even trade back again if we can get like 10 more spots back, although I don't want to lose Wooden. We're only going to move back like a few spots to gain a fifth, and we're just going to take Wooden. We're going to stop, you know, risking. Wait, did I sell? Was that not this year? I thought it said 2023. I might have sold. I actually sold, didn't I? We ended up moving back some spots to the Viking or to the Titans pick. Still got our guy there. 15, which is decent. I really do like Wicks, but I'm going to be going with Wooden because we really need him. So, Colby Wooden, welcome to the squad. Normal development trade, 88 strength, 21 years old, 6'5. But obviously, would have loved. Something not normal, but the fact that he had all those A's and B's, I, you know, really didn't surprise me. We, of course, are using Bengals uh, draft class. I downloaded it literally today. So this, for you, depending on when I upload this, would be only like three, four days old at best. I'm going to move to 26 because wide receiver is not that big of a need just yet. But if Wix is there, I'm going to have to take him. I'm just simply going to have to. And he's not. That's a bit of an L. Uh, Freeland... We could go pass rusher because Zedarius is, you know, he's not that long-term. BJ Ojulari is still there. We didn't get to fully scout him, though. A to C finesse, A to C power with a, a play rec. Coverage sucks. 21. Hmm. 21. It's a little early for edge rusher, though. I think the guard Daniels actually looks good enough to take him here. I'm going to take him. Normal. Damn, dude. That's a huge L. Because we don't even really need linemen either, so we could have just went with Ojulari. I don't know if he's hidden, but Ransom's gone, so I imagine our picks are starting to look a little iffy here. If Coburn's there, I might just take him. Uh, Ojulari's still there too, though. We could use a nose, so I'm going to, you know, got to smell things. Uh, Coburn's my guy, normal development rate. Not really doing so well in this draft, I'm going to be honest with you. I know Marset is actually, like, not even on the team anyways, but a fifth this and a fifth next is pretty close to same value anyways ish kind of because it was a high fifth round pick so we're just going to allow it and we're going to be taking bj ojulari i believe here yeah we're going to be taking bj ojulari i mean this seems like a good pick normal development trait 84 speed 88 excel he's 21 zadarius can be let go literally next year and we save money and that's pretty significant because once again i don't know who we have to pay soon there's going to be some names oh did we not give them the highest pick oh well who cares not my problem. Seahawks fourth round next year sounds good for me. And then with this pick, we're going to be grabbing the punter, Kurt Carter. Normal development trait, but a lot of green, which is like lovely to see. Because uh, I think Ham is gone. Uh, <laughs> we ran out. Uh, and then the final pick is going to be a punter, which, once again, I should know more. But I really can't think of who the damn punter is here. And with that, we are going to be taking the highest kick power guy uh, in Curtis Campbell. 95 kick power, which is beauty. Yeah, who is the punter? I, I think I know. I'll, I'll let. I'll be honest with you. If I see it and I know, I'm gonna say I know. And if I don't, oh well. Oh no, nah, I didn't know who that was. I, if I would have known, I wouldn't even have drafted this guy. This guy is literally the same guy. He's literally the same person, but slower. Oh, oh no. It's a late seventh, anyways. But still, that's a waste. Of course, looking at the players, we did get a 73 overall rookie quarterback hidden development trade. Can't imagine he's higher than Star. I'm honestly shocked he's even hidden, to be honest. So we'll see what his dev is. He is Star, wearing number one, I guess. Whatever. Uh, wooden, 72 overall. I think we need a right end more than a left end. So he's... Oh, 80 block shit. He's actually not bad. Like I said, I expected him to be good. Thought maybe he could have been, uh, you know, start of element trade. But that's fine. We'll take it. Uh, Coburn, 69 overall. He's going to be our starting nose tackle, probably... And you know, it's not looking great. All right, it's not looking great. But relax, okay? Just relax. Seventy-two overall for uh, BJ Ojulari, who obviously looks pretty damn good actually, and he's going to be our right outside linebacker. Because if we're going to replace anyone, I'd imagine it's Zedarius. But then again, if Daniil keeps not doing well, I was going to say sucking, but 
It's a little too uh, too naughty. Uh, you know, I, I just don't know if it's worth keeping him. And, you know, Daniil Hunter could actually be let go because his, you know, if he develop, you know, his regression happens again because he sucks again. I'm going to be forced to let it happen. I'm not going to, you know, keep changing it. But I thought coming off of, you know, being injured again and the sack numbers not being super great, I allowed him, you know, give him one more year. Him and Zedarius, one more year, one more chance. Uh, but that's kind of it. After that, we're, you know, you guys are staying at your dev. Kirk's ratings, still pretty good. Throw power did take a little bit of a hit, but still pretty good. And then defensively, I'm trying to think if there's any other development guys. Uh, defensively, uh, these guys are so bad that Zedarius, like, switched positions pretty much. <laughs> oh, Ham is still here, but, I mean, I suppose with the money he's being paid... No, he's no longer here now. Or right, the year two squad. Uh, I mean, it's it's a little more promising. Obviously, Eric McCoy is a nice addition. Uh, offensive line wise, looks pretty good. It's just money. That's kind of the big issue. You know, we have some re-signings coming up that are going to be costly. Replacing Kirk Cousins, I think, is going to be the big factor. However, if he plays really well, it's going to really throw things for a loop because, yeah, I mean, technically they save a bunch of money the following year, but like. If he's good, you know, I'm not even sure like how that last contract works. I think the last year in his contract is like void or something. This might actually be his last year. I don't even know. But look at the defense. Some progress as you got Greedy Williams. D-line, sure, it is low overall again, but you actually have some youth. Wooden or Coburn, both maybe if we're lucky enough. They both get dev ups and, you know, they're just as good as Phillips, Dalvin Tomlinson, and uh, the other guy that I already forgot, or Armin Watts instantly. The huge problem, though, is Harrison Smith. That is a really tough regression. And, of course, can't get rid of him. So he's literally anchoring this team down rebuild-wise uh, quite a bit. But he is still a decent overall, at least. So, you know, actually having to use him would be a different story. Whereas he's still probably good enough. Oh, number two. I didn't even notice. What's up, Dalvin? But, yeah, he's, he's still going to be useful. BJ Jolari with a plus four to upgrade to his block shedding. I would assume... It goes without saying that he's named B. Ojulari because the game is going to think it's Blowjob Ojulari. If not, I imagine you guys picked that up already. Instead of people, with the, it's going to be somebody that's like, why do you keep saying he BJ? It says B. His name's B. It's like, is that really a name, B? So actually not having a bad season, but having a bad time looking at the re-signings is there are some expensive players here. Daniil Hunter is a guy that you would think, uh, first and foremost, is the guy that you have to look at first, but... If he's not playing that well, what do we do? You know what I mean? Um, oh, he is playing well, though. That's nice. Okay, so I don't know if he's really deserved anything more than a 20. So if he's willing to pay, take a four-year, I'm not considering shorter deals. Four years is a shorter deal. Okay, I guess. Ezra Cleveland, two-year. That's actually kind of costly. He is good, and he is pretty young, and he is not interested, sadly. Uh, how good actually is he? He's actually not very good, but he's young, so I'd be willing to do like a two-year. I mean, you can't really get much more costly than what he's asking for. I can't really do much more than like a two-year 25. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Dantzler, also not interested. We have Greedy long-term. Dantzler's decent, but he is like slow as hell. Uh, Rager, how well is he playing? He was okay last year. Based on last year, if he's doing similarly, I'd probably give him this deal. Uh, yeah, about similarly as far as touchdowns are a little bit lower, but I'd be willing to do that, especially with Thielen going soon. We kind of need that depth, so, uh, a three-year 17 if he's willing. I need a bigger... Oh my god, the re-signing in this game really has been pissing me off. Please, Kirk, tell me you're sucking. The one year I want you to be bad. That's pretty bad. We're like week 14 right now, that's not good. Picks are low, but so is produ production. It's it's useless. Four-year 83 for Daniil, which is still pretty good in our favor. Eric Kendricks, I'm sorry. he's just He just can't stick around it. He's going to drop so hard. But I do like him. If we can do a one-year, like, 13. Would he do a one-year 13? That's not terrible for him. Let's do a one-year 12.5. Uh, you probably could, in fairness. Two-year 25, really? I did a three-year 38 for Ezra, which is pretty high. But based on his age, dev, and uh, overall, it's, I mean, it's not bad. 
And then Rager is asking for quite a bit. I might have to just, yeah, I mean, you can go, dude. Like a, a three-year 21 is seven mil per year for a guy putting up like 700 yards a, a season. I mean, he's not that fast. If he was a little bit faster, maybe I could see 10 per, but I, I just can't. That's just too much. Yes, we wanted that badly. Wooden with the dev up, 10k XP on top of it. I offered him one final contract, a one-year $13 million deal with 12 million guaranteed, and he has decided to go to free agency. Sure, a 90 overall looks great, but at 31, superstar, even if he got to X-Factor, he's going to drop to an 84, 85 at best. And then for Dantzler, it's not bad money. It's just, you know, we have three guys that are all around 80 overall. And, I mean, we kind of just need, like, a slot corner to deal with. We don't really need any, like, starting caliber guys. And once again, he is on the slower side. So, I think at best, at this point in time, I would offer him a th five-year 30 if he takes it. Oh, okay. I was about to say, if he takes it, he takes it. Which is really good for us and not bad for him. Do we have a starting caliber cornerback uh, group? If we win, maybe we're in, and we did it again. Of course, it was against the Chiefs, and you're thinking, wow, what a game to win when you're only 8-8. Eight and eight. But look at the Chiefs. This is a strange one. We have injuries off. They're 6-11. and 11. What is going on here? 6-11 and 11 Chiefs, 7-10 and 10 Buccaneers. Maybe Brady's gone. I didn't see him in... Uh, he might have just retired uh, in a Packers rebuild. They did uh, Rodgers retired out the gate with Brady. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a little strange. Of course, Kirk Cousins numbers picks are low, but once again, so are touchdowns and yards rushing a little bit better for Dalvin receiving Jefferson and Thielen were solid. Rager was pretty good. Actually kind of deserving of that contract. We, you know, maybe should have given him. uh, looking at the sack totals, please. Daniil gets to stay as dev Zadarius. It's not bad. So if they don't drop him dev, I won't manually do it, but I also won't fix him if they do give him up and dev. Wooden with eight sacks on the interior of a 3-4. Maybe good enough. Blankenship with that 3 or 11 we gave him. I think it was something around that. Really earning it there. And then Jimmy Garoppolo, the MVP. And I know there's going to be people that are like, see, he, he, he. It's like, the, I just don't see that ever happening. Of course, we do not get Rookie of the Year. Oh, Defensive Rookie of the Year actually was number two. Jalen Carter, number one. That's a huge L. No awards. But once again, back in the playoffs, Barely. We're probably number seven seed back to back years. But we are also four overalls higher than the Panthers, who are 12 and 5. So, I mean, what does that tell you? I mean, we're just unlucky. Also, I didn't even think about it, but we've already almost knocked out the NFC North for rebuilds. Do we do the Bears next, perhaps? Kind of want to do Seahawks next, just just to get these out of the way early when the rosters are similar. Just to see, you know, when the year. Wow, we're doing really well here. Uh, you know, when the year ends for Madden 23, which is a long time from now, uh, maybe we can come back and be like, oh, this is. You know, this is interesting. We did better than this, or we did worse than this rebuild. And barely winning there. We really choked that one away, but did not actually choke. We ended up winning, and Matt Corral's the quarterback here. I did see Baker in free agency, so must not have been great for him. Dalvin, good touchdowns, good yards per carry, just not a great sample size. Irv was decent. Jefferson was great. You know, Thielen and Rager did their parts. I mean, just a really good team effort on offense. Defensively, a couple of sacks across the board. Bynum with two interceptions. Uh, if there's anything to be said about, you know, the way this edge rush is looking right now, uh, gotta say it has not been worth it for Minnesota yet. You know, it's Zedarius wasn't a bad contract by any means, but definitely not the elevator that they thought he was going to be. And not like a physical elevator, you know what I mean. And is it, what's his hair doing? What is, what is that back there? Like what's going on around there? The Cowboys, two overalls higher than us, four wins higher than us at home. This is another tough giant of a matchup all right going to the end of the game left to right looks to be us we turn the ball over early they turn it into seven we get they get nothing we turn it around we get three now down by 11 now down by 18 and now going home for a second straight year losing in the divisional i mean this almost seems like the perfect timing that kirk is gone like i mean to get back to the divisional thinking okay maybe this is our year maybe we're maybe we're gonna do something and to get smoked by that much, I think is just proof. And of course, let's take a look at the numbers. I mean, Kirk wasn't great, but he also, you know, wasn't, you know, terrible. And I think that's kind of the whole story with him is, is just you're never going to get the guy that's going to, like, elevate you enough here. And I think it's time to move on. Now, as far as real life goes, I don't know if that's true. I actually think Kirk is pretty decent, but 
As for this rebuild, I mean, it's clear cut. He's just not the guy. I don't know if it's the throw power, what's the story, but he's just not going to be good enough to win us a Super Bowl. Could just be the playbook as well, but storyline, age, nor, you know, dev, contract, it's, it's time for him to go. Really glad we went for the quarterback now. It really wasn't that I was, like, worried about the timeline as the Rams beat the Bills. It's not that I was really worried about the timeline of, you know, Kirk or not. I was just worried if the guy was going to be good, you know, and obviously he seems to be... Kirk is now a 71 overall, and I cannot drop him. You know, I can't raise his dev. As far as Dalvin goes, doesn't deserve to drop in dev, in my opinion. Same with Thielen. I just don't see why either would drop in dev. They were both good again. As far as Thielen goes, though, I'd be pretty surprised to see him still playing at this point, you know, going on for another year. Uh, and then defensively, drop down for uh, Zadarius. I'm going to allow it. Uh, Harrison drops again, and he is just useless. He's a 78 overall. Please be releasable. Man, that's going to be rough for our Vikings franchise. You literally can't use him. He's a literally unusable at strong safety. And Kendricks didn't really regress as hard as I would have thought, but still 86 overall. It's still a four-point drop, and I'd imagine if we were to give him a contract now, which we can't because he wants to go to a new team, the asking price would probably be around 8 or 9 mil versus the like 12.5 he wanted per year, which... We offered, you know, way higher than that. So that's, I mean, that's kind of on him. That's all I can say. But yeah, like I said, about nine per. The tag is 17. Can't do it. Tag for Rager is obviously too, too high as Christian Kirk with the, uh, the market screw up. Of course, wide receiver is a need. Do we pay someone big, big money though? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we do that, but we do want to help our youngster quarterback out. Pretty much a rookie as much as possible. Herbert's there. Who cares? Jameis Winston is, uh, what's his name even getting offers? Kirk is not getting a single offer. Wow, that's kind of rough. Wide receivers, T. Higgins. Wouldn't be a bad change of kind of pace wide receiver, but also am definitely not willing to pay him that kind of money. Pittman. Jerry Judy could be a good name. I don't know if I see the Broncos releasing him, though. Like, I really don't want to develop another wide receiver. I'd rather just, you know, obviously sign someone if we can. Giants have a better offer. How? Did they sign one of the, like, great quarterbacks or something? We're slightly on top of them for the offer, but I still don't know if that's enough to actually win it. But it is what it is. We still do have Thielen, so I'm not, like, that crazy about replacing anyone yet. Eric Kendricks has no offers. Bobby Wagner is here, though, and I'm going to be offering him a one-year $12 million deal. I would love to get someone long-term like Queen or Simmons, but those guys are a little bit off of like being fully developed. I don't think we're ready just yet, technically, but I still think we can maybe shock some people. Is The rest of the team was kind of carrying Kirk anyways, so at the end of the day, if you look at it, if that rookie quarterback can come out swinging, he might be looking all right. So the only guy that actually accepted is Bobby Wagner. Jerry Judy is still being hunted by another team. Don't really want to spend too much more than we offered. I was already offering nearly 20 per, which is not terrible for his overall and youth and fairness, but I really don't want to spend too much more than that, so I'll put that on. And then for McKinney, that's not a bad deal. And we ended up getting all three. Not bad contracts. Still have 20 mil left to hopefully afford Justin Jefferson, especially if Thielen and Harrison could be let go the next season, which would be great, but... Yeah, not terrible. Not terrible, and uh, we still have a draft to use, which I think we have like an extra fourth-round pick for, I think. Actually, no, we have like an equal fourth-round because we had to get rid of one for uh, Rager. I'm really kind of regretting that Dantzler contract now because there is a solid-looking cornerback that we just simply can't grab. This guy looks really good. Ben Newsom. Look at how fast he is. Like, I don't know what that man coverage is, but this could literally be one of those X-Factor generational guys or whatever they call him. He literally looks that good. Like, I kid you not. Um, it's really uh, disappointing because we can't really grab him because we don't really need him. His zone coverage is decent, but we have safeties, we have corners, we have everything we need for the future. I mean, this just seems like a trade down, but like, who do we even take anyways? We need edge kind of the most. But we do have BJ Ojulari who's waiting there. Do we just grab this guy as like a luxury pick? I, I don't really know. Could put, uh, put, you could put McKinney and linebacker maybe? I don't know. The guy's too good not to grab though. Ben Newsom. I'm going to grab him. Hidden development trade, 94 speed, 95 Excel. He just looks too talented. 
Like, even if we have to waste money somewhere, like, Greedy wasn't a crazy expensive contract, in fairness, so maybe that's, you know, the guy that gets let go or something. I don't know. We go to 68 and 100 from the Lions, which is obviously a very good trade for us. And with this high third, the Buccaneers are willing to give us a second next year, which, of course, could be kind of a bad trade for us. It could actually, like, backfire a bit, but I don't really have anyone this year to draft. I mean, this draft class is weak in all the positions we need, and... We still even then have draft picks to be made. You know, we could go with uh, the tight end. I don't really think he's that good, but Mullins, the guard looks good. This linebacker looks all right, which we, oh, I didn't even think about it. We actually really need linebacker. Bobby Wagner's here, but that's not going to be for that long. I'm actually going to go with him. Ross Ridgeway, super fast and surprisingly hidden. Usually those really fast guys aren't hidden, but we'll take it. Once again, you know, most of these guys are going to be like star devs. So I'm not really that worried about it, which is why I didn't really care that he was going to be normal development trait that's what i at least assumed when taking him I, you know it's fine get the dev up get the xp but obviously it helps that we don't have to do that got two nose tackles i want one of them uh because maybe we'll get lucky with a hidden or someone that's a little bit better than the guy we have currently but at that point i kind of want to just like trade down until we actually see one of them go before taking one because they're both super similar anyways and the browns are going to give us a third next year which once again it's kind of fair because they're a really good team this is a high fourth, so you got to give us some sort of value back, right? We traded to 116 and gained a seventh next year. I was trying to move back a little bit more so we can, once again, keep getting as many picks as possible and waiting out that player, which we're going to do again with the Bengals this time. Once again, seventh round picks don't really do a whole lot for me, but oh, of course he goes right there. Now I have to trade up with the Raiders. Surely we can just give them the exact trade back, right? They did take it, in fairness, so I'm not really too mad about it now, but <laughs> that would have been so dumb, dude. We're going to have to take a look at uh, Cunningham, but Bernie Pettis, you know, a little bit of potential there with all those Cs, hoping for hidden, and we get hidden, and we get 99 strength. Holy. Okay, I mean, we've seen some 99 strengthers before, but like... You know, to actually be able to use one, because he's going to be the automatic starter. I'm sorry, Coburn, you are, you're no longer the guy. You know, normally we just have those guys as backups. We're just hoping for some miracle. Uh, but running back, don't really need one that bad, but this guy does look decent. I mean, a trucking, decently fast, wouldn't hurt. Don't really have the draft picks for it, though. Of course, all my players are gone. Draft recap, actually not a bad draft at all. Uh, 77 overall for that corner. This guy's kind of nuts, actually. 94 speed, 95 excel, 77 zones, 72 man. Jumping does suck. Could he actually be an X Factor? I've seen some people with like 80 overalls. He's a superstar, so he's not a generational, but he is absolutely insane. And he was probably going to start already, but if I can't get a trade for Greedy, he might actually sit a year. And then Ridgeway, what is his overall? Was that 70, 71, something like that? Take a look at his dev. Not going to start this year because we got Bobby Wagner. Another superstar. Okay, we'll take that. We are developing a squad here with this draft alone. I mean, two superstars. You know, the cornerback's not super needed, but the linebacker will be. Bobby's definitely gone after this year. 99 strength, 70 block shed, 70 power move. Some pretty good traits, actually. Let's take a look at his dev. It's almost guaranteed to be star. It has to be star. It's either normal or star for these nose tackles. Holy! Is... Wait, is that a generational? It has to be. A day three nose tackle with X-Factor has to be. He's a 72 overall, but I thought all the generational players were like in the 80s. I mean, <laughs> we talked about him starting before we looked at his dev. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to say he's absolutely starting now. Here's some of the guys that we drafted, you know, after uh, those main picks. Yeah, some some depth, that wide receiver. But this team, if the rookie can get up to speed, which he is already a 77 overall in fairness, if he can get up to speed quickly, we could actually do some damage already. Of course, we did want to see the DT of the, the Bengals. Also hit in development trade. He is younger in fairness. Uh, but, I mean, unless he's also an X-Factor, I, I don't think he's going to be as good as our guy. If he's also X-Factor, dude. Okay, he's only star development trait, but Jesus. Okay, well, Coburn is literally useless. 
Now, if someone did, I mean, to be fair, like I said, I did ask the question. I don't know if he actually is generational, but if people deny me a, a, a generational this time, I'm going to be mad. And just like this, okay. Year three squad, uh, the best it's been, ironically enough, without Kirk Cousins. Of course, Thielen's going to be gone after this season. I think Zedarius needs a contractor this year. He is really expensive this year, but once again, it doesn't really matter to get rid of him now. If we don't have to pay him next year, it's going to count for next year anyways for cap, right? So... Uh, I'm not really sure. What about the cap rollover, though? Like, so should we actually be trying to get rid of Zared Arias, who hasn't even played that well anyways? He's okay. We could probably actually get, like, a six-round pick for him or something like that from a team that's desperate if they can afford him. I traded him to the Falcons for a six-round pick, but to be honest, it's probably unrealistic. We probably should have just gave it to him for some random player because they don't want to pay that contract, right? So, either way, Ojulari is going to be our outside linebacker opposite of Daniil Bobby Wagner, starting middle linebacker, still an X-Factor, and this is what the cornerback lineup looks like for now. Don't know what we can do with Greedy, but Greedy is probably better than Dantzler anyways, so really regretting that Dantzler contract, not gonna lie. Hey, is, does that mean he's star? Okay, so it's a good decision we already traded uh, Zedarius then, because he's a star dev already. Oh lord, Justin Jefferson doesn't want to resign, dude. All the players that we don't want want to resign. We do have a ton of money, though. So Justin Jefferson is a 30 mil per year kind of guy, right? Oh, that's the base? That's the base. Holy crap. How many years? Five? Five year 165 out the gate. Let's, let's start her out with that. I mean, probably not by much, to be fair. Aaron McCoy wants a three year 34. If he's willing to take a three year 35, I'd do it. Yay! Finally, somebody signs with us without absolutely ripping us a new one. Of course, Darisaw is a very solid player. I'm willing to do like a, a four-year 65. He's cool with it. <sighs> four-year 70, maybe. Man, this is... These contracts, man, they're killing me. A five-year 172 he won't do. This is getting absurd! Five-year 70, Darisaw says no, which, I mean... Like, really... I don't feel like that's like, I don't know. A five-year 178, which comes out to about $35 million per. I don't know if the wide receiver market's ever going to be like that, but just going to let it happen. It is what it is. Hopefully, we don't have to pay uh, the quarterback before this rebuild is pretty much over. Obviously, having a pretty good year here. Hey, the quarterback is a superstar. Of course, this is his second year, though, so I wonder if the game would actually regress him if he doesn't have the prototypical season that they need him to have pretty damn good year i don't know if it's gonna be good enough for a bye week and oh we lost that might have actually cost us the bye week losing to the bears love to do it and it did cost about oh come on either way uh we kept the same scheme i'm not sure what the stats are gonna look like hopefully uh they're better which maybe can prove that uh the scheme isn't the dream oh no i did change the defense actually i forgot about that which you know, it's not the same as the offense, so I'm not going to feel bad about if the offense played better. But this is what the team looked like, you know. Really good win streak and then loss to the Bears, which once again cost us that bye week, which would have uh, gotten us a free shot to the divisional, which is usually where we lose. Uh, Van Dyke, a lot more picks, but a lot more yards and touchdowns. Rushing was a little bit better as well. Receiving, Jefferson was great. Judy was really good too. Thielen was okay. Smith was better. Also a devil worshiper, apparently. Blocking was pretty good. Uh, sack totals Asamoah with a lot of tackles. Wooden with 11. Hunter with 10.5. Ojulari with 5.5 picks. Nothing really crazy there. Kicking. Ooh, Blankenship way worse than last year. We also put Curtis Campbell as the starting punter because he was just overall better. And then yearly awards. Uh, we wouldn't have won anything like that. But maybe like something like D-line or something like that. Anything? No. Ayuk, I, I thought it was our guy for some reason. Jerry, Judy, and Ayuk just remind me of each other. But the Rams in the playoffs, the divisional round. Can we actually go all the way? All right, end of the game, right to left is us, and we do get the touchdown. We stop them. We get all the way down the field, but nothing. Then we stop them and get the touchdown again. 14-3, to the Rams are giving us a fight, and no points before half again, leaving this door way too open for them. And the defense is doing really well still, though. And just like that, they get the touchdown on the two-point. We finally get back on the board. And even though it's scary for out, you know, throughout the entire game, we do win 24-11. to Gotta remember, this is the guy's first year starting, yet still pretty good. Not bad. Uh, of course, 
Looking at the receiving numbers, Thielen would love to see him get a Super Bowl ring before he retires. He deserves it off the field and on the field. Uh, kicking was pretty good. Their guy missed. And we move on to the dreaded divisional round. Just anyone but some god team. And it's another god team, the Dallas Cowboys, who are actually lower overall than us now. But, of course, a very stacked roster regardless of the points. 7-0. Struggling like we did last week and last time we played them. 17 to 7. Nice little turnaround. 17 to 14, 24 to 14, and it's looking rough. It's looking like another loss, to be honest. Down by six. Offense gets the lead. Second and 17. They run by a three yard run. Field goal gets in the lead, but it's not a crazy one. Come on, offense. Third and four. I think you got to go for this. Your defense has not been consistent enough. Obviously, either has the offense, but for them four from midfield, they're only up two, so worst-case scenario, you could still get the stop. Let up a field goal. Who cares? I'm going to be honest with you. I was predetermining Judy quite a bit there. Thought he was going to be the best off the snap, and it was a good play. Conversion. I don't want to say it, but I'm feeling something's coming here. I don't want to say it, but I feel it. No, it's not. It's a touchdown is what's coming. Two minutes for Dallas to drive down, though. Fourth and eight, I want to be in here to see it. What would you even run here? If you like a four-man rush, like, I don't know. Phillips going against Zach Martin, this will be a user we can make because he's not even a good pass rusher anyway, so we're not taking away, and we're also not making the team too good, although he kind of did. And, of course, he holds on. Yep, yep. Throws a terrible read, and, of course, it's going to be caught. That is so dumb, dude. Phillips, wow. Phillips is making plays here, though. Wagner wearing 10? Ooh, I can't call a timeout. I'm trying to get off the field and sim, and I can't because they're just hurrying up every time. Bobby with a good tackle. Please just call a timeout. Thank you. I can get out of here now. Although it's probably going to lead to a victory for them. I'm just going to be honest with you. This is just too easy. Okay, 31-yard line. They've Really? We're not going to go three-man deep? Hello? Why wouldn't we go three-man deep from the 31? I mean, we're not going to go with a pitch play from here or anything like that. All right, chance to finally get to the championship if they catch this, dude. Well, they kind of had a chance. They had a little bit. But we win by five. We really didn't play that big of a factor. You can't say, oh, he's cheating again. We got a four-yard first down, which the game probably could have gone on its own, to be honest. Anyways, this team is stacked on offense. The youngster quarterback, debatably considered a rookie, getting us, even though he didn't play that well, but a lot of yards... To the championship round, whereas Kirk couldn't. Kirk Cousins couldn't. Yeah, that's that's a lot of, uh, I was going to say Ks, but you know, I think thankfully there's a C in there. Here we go, championship round. The Buccaneers, dude, really? They were like 7-10. and 10. Who do they have at QB? They maybe just signed someone new. Oh, they do have a youngster. Fair enough. Who do they have the beat to get here, though? That's That's always a question I like to know the answer to. Uh, bye week, because we choked it, and then the Bears. Okay, so in fairness, there is something to be said that they've kind of not had a tough challenge yet. We could be that challenge and maybe send ourselves to the fifth Viking Super Bowl. Maybe finally get a win, though. Vikings fans watching this are like, we were on board until you said that. <laughs> of course, seven points right out the gate. We're driving, but we're not scoring. Like, they're scoring, like, every time. Okay, we hold them to three. We'll take the field goal. At some point, we need a touchdown, though. Offense is struggling hard here, and that's going to be a GG. Damn, dude. I mean, there is a chance. There actually is a chance. I'm going to come in here and try to, try to you know, uh, play my hand a little bit. See what's, uh, just, just see what's up a little, you know, just to see what's going on. You know, it could never hurt. Oh, it really hurts when I'm using though. I'll tell you what, we actually hurt the team there. And surely in this situation, surely, surely they're going to run it, right? Goal line, you gotta. Can we, I mean, they got linebackers, but like, I was to say, can we balance out a little bit more? Phillips, San Fournette is short. I don't think they're going to go for this, right? All right, there's a chance. We'd have to get the touchdown and the two point, though. Almost blocked, hit the kicker late, they didn't call it. Unless you got a piece of it, but to be fair, the ball did kind of come down a little weirdly. They're absolutely ready for this. Can we go with an audible? Feeling, my man. Hit as we're throwing. 
I feel the quarterback's pain because that was like instant. I had like no chance to react to anything there. Is that a wide open Jerry Judy? I mean, it looks pretty good to me. Let's hurry up to the line. Oh, this is interesting. Is that Thielen on that out there? No, it's not. It is a wide open Judy again. Touchdown. They do not have the speed. Carlin Davis is like 88 speed, dude. What are you doing? That is a really good route, though. Oh, yeah, the two point. Crap. I forgot we still needed the two. I really want to run a squiggle for Judy, but Judy's been the guy. They really look like they're ready for this. And we're not going to get it. Damn it, we sold. I was looking at that left side because obviously there's the multiple slants. No way. We just did all that for nothing. Unblock. Please tell me it wasn't another trash can Madden. <sighs> this game is so trash, dude. Like, what is Dalvin doing? What is he doing? <laughs> What is he doing? Who is he? Hello? He didn't even hesitate. He was running from the get-go. Oh, well. Onside kick for a championship loss. Beautiful. Well, that's a good kick. Oh, Mike Evans played a risky, too. He could have just let that thing go. Well, we're going to lose by two. Sure, we maybe should have played a little bit better for, you know, finding someone open quicker, but... Literally had a running back blocker, and Dalvin Cook just missed Devin White completely. Literally no point in running any blockers. You just want as many receivers out as possible to find someone open, because it doesn't matter who you block, they're just not going to. You simply put, sad way to lose, especially when you consider the fact that, you know, I'm not saying we would have gotten that read to B. Of course, Rodrigo missed the field goal at some point. Maybe we did deserve to lose then. Not saying we're going to hit that B read, which was a little late from us, but... Would have at least had a chance with the literal perfect blocking setup, and we just missed the block. Once again, it's not like he hesitated, you know, did some rap or, you know, something crazy to, like, trick us. He literally just ran straight, and Dalvin was like, I'm the right guard's tail. Of course, Chiefs versus Buccaneers, and the winner of this one is the Buccaneers. Of course, that could have been us. Nice. DevOps, any at all is the question. And I don't think so. Judy didn't go up either, which is crazy because he's you know 1,500 yards. Defensively, Bobby Wagner dropped in Dev. Pettis obviously was the X Factor already. Uh, Newsom was a superstar already. Same with Ridgeway. I kind of want to keep Bobby if we can keep him, though, if we can like afford him. But Ridgeway kind of deserves the start. If we could do something to replace our left end with a really good player, then I would maybe not want to re-sign. I don't know, dude. What do we do? Because I like Bobby a lot, and I think he was a huge part of the reason why we kind of got over the hump a little bit. He is interested in re-signing. How much money we got? Didn't need to back out for that. Oh, we should pay him. Please, Bobby. It's fair. Yay, he's back. Nice. Darisaw, 25 mil. I mean, we were paying him pretty much 20 mil per anyways, so get one more year out of him and not even be locked up is nice. Harrison Phillips, sadly, is a block shedder. We need power, uh, or not power move, guys, but we need pass rushers. We need a guy that can actually penetrate the inside for a, uh, you know, a pass attack. We've already got that nose tackle. So Thielen, I can't remember if we had to re-sign him, but he's absolutely gone regardless. You know, we appreciate you. Really wanted to get that Super Bowl for him, but couldn't. Uh, guard is always an option here. Uh, linebacker, I think we're set on. We just have to wait for next season to start Ridgeway. Ojulari wasn't great, but he's obviously on the right track. Corners are great. I mean, they're not great, but they're getting there for sure, and Newsom is... Is already kind of a beast. Uh, I mean, just another season under the belt. We need a left end, and that's it. It's really just can we get lucky enough to win the Super Bowl? I mean, obviously the quarterback's getting better every year, but you know, this sim kind of chooses, picks and chooses what they want to do, right? So, Aaron Donald, we you know use him in our most or one of our most recent rebuilds, and it didn't really go well for us, but he did play well. And once again, we only really need like a one year kind of guy, anyways. And we have the money for a one-year contract for sure for Aaron Donald. Do we want to do it? Probably, actually. Sign Aaron Donald to a one-year 30 if he's willing. And then... Yeah, Pitts is never leaving Atlanta. I just don't see it happening unless he really wants out. But And then just draft like a, a D-end and a, an alignment or two. And call it a draft. I, I, like, I like that idea. Hopefully we get Donald. I think, once again, just like Bobby Wagner, ironically enough, I think he could easily put us over the edge. Also, he's pretty interested. What is the what are the interests? So, league favorite, we're up there. 
Uh, we do have a franchise quarterback. Okay market. I wouldn't say it's a small market-ish, right? I mean, it's not, like, huge, but... You know, they do have um, all of America, which is massive. I mean, imagine that's pretty touristy. I really want to pay Aaron Donald that much, but at the same time, this could literally be our year. And if it's our year, can you really put a price on it? I think 32.5 mil is that price. I mean, I can't do more than that. I'm sorry. If he doesn't want to join us, that's that's something else. And he took the offer. He sees something in us. We still have 33 mil, which is okay. I think. I don't. I hope we don't have to pay anyone. I don't think we do, though. And a lot of the guys we have right now, we've already paid. So, like, looking at we have to pay uh, Derisaw, but he's going to make less than that. Uh, what else do you have? Dalvin, probably around 15 per. Wagner will be gone. Donald will probably be gone. Irv should be gone. And even if he isn't, the money isn't going to be that crazy. Seen, we can give him the uh, fifth-year option, which we probably will, to be honest. And same with Booth, to be honest. Um, Ingram. So, linemen... And kind of, uh, you know, corner-ish. Not really, actually. So I guess linemen and D-line, just, just the trenches. So we already talked about this, uh, but the fifth-year options. Actually, now I'm going to say no to scene, and then I'm going to say yes to Booth to save some money. Because Booth is going to... Oh, Booth's not a first-round pick. You guys are probably, like, yelling at me the moment I mentioned that. I forgot. I don't know why. I just felt like he was a first-round pick. That's a little bit of an L, but that's okay. We have pick 30, which is literally the worst draft pick to have if it's your own, as that means you have the very worst pick of teams that did not make the Super Bowl, which is really bad. Of course, looking at what we can take. Ooh, Jay McPhee is still there. We really don't need a wide receiver, but 4 2 4 40 is so hard to pass on. We also do have these two D linemen, which is probably our number one need by a mile. Uh, 37 reps, 4, 7, 6. He's 21. And then Donnell or Donnell, also 21. I don't think it's really much of an argument. So we're actually going to draft him now. George Webster, please be good. Hidden development rate, we'll take it. I don't know what the other guy's going to be like, but that's all we need. And uh, yeah, I mean, once Donald's gone next season, we'll be uh, we'll be set. I mean, we'll be we'll be fine. And McPhee goes to the Chiefs, dude. That's not even fair. They literally got another Tyreek Hill, I bet. Of course, with our next pick, uh, there's a couple of linemen. That's kind of our need. I think if we want to keep this team good, especially with that quarterback needing the contract at some point in like a couple years, you kind of need to just keep rotating linemen. I don't know if I really want Yates that badly, but we're going to grab some of these. I want at least two linemen, and I'll consider it a draft win. And I think those two linemen are going to be Cochran and uh, Gore, so we're going to trade this away. Oh, we have two seconds. I forgot the Buccaneers pick was our pick, wasn't it? That was a massive L from us. We're going to take the Chiefs trade. It's nothing crazy. I'm just trying to get to the third round. I don't need a pick this high, you know? And we're not getting good trade offers. I'm just going to take the two linemen I want now. So I think clear cut, Cochran is the best of the bunch. A little bit weak in the strength. Ooh, maybe not. The front page looked great, but I don't know. Yates is still there as well. We're going to take Yates. Jimmy Yates, hidden development trade. That's a win. Absolute win. And then, even though this is a little bit of a reach... Actually, we could probably trade this down for next year and just take one of the linemen at seven. Packers, I can't imagine they're going to be good next year unless that's not their pick. I'm down. Jamichael Lamb is actually the cornerback that they told me to keep an eye out on for. So, that kind of suck if we actually just gave them a god-tier uh, corner, but... Travis Gore is going to be our next lineman. I think he is clear-cut the best remaining. And another hidden development trade lineman. And we're happy with the draft, I can say, pretty confidently. Titans pick next year, third round-wise, which, you know, who knows what it's going to be like. But taking that risk, because once again, we just don't have anyone here. And then with this pick, you know, with some of the running backs kind of going here, I think I'm going to take the running back, Khalil Randall. 22, you know, 200 some pounds, power back, looks all right. We take a fourth from the Bengals next year because I all my players are pretty much gone. I'm down to like a kicker who I'll probably take here because, I mean, he looks okay. He's not great, but I just don't want everything to be a trade down. I mean, I always say it, you know, as far as rebuilds go, it's probably my most unrealistic thing in the rebuild is the drafting stuff. And I always go into... Well, if you knew a player was never going to be good for you, why would you draft them? And, you know, blah, 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 whatnot. We also traded three decent sixths for a fourth-round pick 
from the Broncos next year. Depth is important. You know, if we're doing that re zero overall rebuild again, you know, I need depth more than anything. So maybe that's what they need too. Maybe they're doing a zero overall rebuild and we just didn't know. And this guy's also pretty fast, so even though he's going to suck, we're going to grab him. Although, 99 speed, 96 excel hidden. That's a dub. 99. Okay. That's literally max. Okay, we'll take it. Also pretty much drafted Kenny Pickett there right at the end. I didn't show, but interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah, pretty much, dude. Like, he's, it's sad because he's actually probably better than Pickett in the game. <laughs> That's so bad. Of course, uh, some pretty good overalls, actually. 74 overall for Webster, who will be our new left end when it's all said and done. 69, that's kind of reserved already for a legend, so let's not do that. Uh, do we even have anything in the 90s? 93, fair enough. Is a superstar. We are kind of killing the superstars, though, even though we really haven't used them. Jimmy Yates, you know, he's an okay lineman. I don't know what his deb's going to be. What do we actually need? I guess right guard, probably. Um, star deb. We probably should actually start one of these guys when you consider the fact that our right guard is a normal dev and needs a contract. Nice trucking, okay, like a faster Alexander Madison. Uh, and then the kicker, I don't really care too much about. And then Walton. 99 speed, 96 excel, a bit rough, kind of reminding me a lot of Anthony Schwartz here, which, I mean, it's nothing bad about an Anthony Schwartz. He goes for a decent bit in franchise. Also superstar, okay. So there's a decent bit of those gems kind of hiding around, which I like to see. It's pretty fun. Actually, I'd even remember, um, I forgot Travis Gore completely, another superstar, or did we mention that? My brain kind of hurts. <laughs> of course, you can tell that we didn't force it, because I'm pretty sure... If you change the dev of a rookie, it changes their dev. At least the superstar, I'm pretty sure. It changes their dev right there on the spot. Uh, we should actually trade off, like, Daniels or something. I do like the fact that Engram is a power blocker and he's played pretty well. But Daniels, we should trade. We traded a fourth-round pick to the Giants. Well, you know, the opposite way. Daniels to the Giants for a fourth-round pick, of course. He's pretty good overall and he would go for more than that, like, if you're using him. But... Since we know how easy it is to grab uh, hidden and good linemen, uh, you know, good dev overall linemen, I, I think that's fair. So, of course, the quarterback is only an 82 overall. Could get to, like, an 88 by the end of the season if we're lucky. Uh, but this is the best team we've had, without a doubt. You know, a 99 uh, wide receiver 1, 97 running back, 92 wide receiver 2, 99 speed wide receiver number 3. Tight end's okay. Uh, the tackles are great. The interior is pretty solid. Ingram's probably going to get let go after this season. D-line, the best it's been by far. You have an insane nose tackle who's obviously still a little raw, but, you know, X-Factor, Beast, really good block shedding already, actually. Aaron Donald's a freak, the best of all time. Uh, you know, Wooden had a pretty good year, obviously. The corners, the overalls aren't great, but we have, like, a unit. You know, there's four solid starting capable corners, which is pretty damn good. Safeties are really solid. Linebackers, you know, Wagner's insane. The Hunter's done all right. I do worry, though, about the regression of Hunter and then obviously losing Wagner next season and then obviously losing Donald next season. So I'm not saying that this is the year, but I feel like if we don't win it this year, I don't know if we're going to win it next, which is, of course, the last year we'll do if we don't win it here. So we are midway through the season, and we're looking okay, nothing spectacular. Dalvin Cook is a guy that I absolutely think we should keep. I think most people would agree. 10 mil per year over three at 30 isn't, yeah, I mean, I'd actually ask for a lot more if I was him too. Uh, Dara saw, last time we asked, you know, we gave him something similar to this. He said, no, we're just going to straight up give him a three or 62. And he was actually willing to, which is a little bit more than we offered, but surprising he didn't just take it. Andrew Booth, a five year 65, I think would be perfect. And he's down, which is sweet. Uh, anyone else? So, uh, Lewis Seen, of course, we will be offering him a five-year 40. Hopefully, he's down. I don't think he will be. And, yes, I knew. Uh, maybe a 45, perhaps. Uh, awesome Moa. Is that a three-year? I'd be willing to give him, like, a four-year 25 if he's down. Oof. Maybe a four-year 30, perhaps. Uh, Blankenship. So, we don't really have many contracts to resign. Obviously, we're going to lose Wagner. We're going to lose Donald, which are big pieces. But as far as, like, kind of expecting that, you know, big deal... Uh, and then Irv is going to be a little bit of a question mark as 
he is good, but like, can we not replace him? I don't know. Like, he's he's been pretty average at best. He's a good overall, but I, I think you'd let him go. I don't think he's worth... If he wants to take the exact value, sure. And no. Okay, so see you later then. I uh, paid Donald the one-year 21. If he's willing to stay on that, if he doesn't retire, that is a steal. So I'm just saying. And then Lewis Seen, we did get Dalvin uh, back for a three-year 35. Lewis Seen's a five-year 45, and we still have money. Uh, oh, yeah, we have to get Asamoah, which is... I mean, that seems pretty easy. You just give him a, a nice four-year 30. Boom, bing, bow. Everyone's happy. We have some money to pay the quarterback whenever that needs to happen. And we may have to pay uh, Blankenship, but I don't know how well he's playing. And he played pretty badly last season, so wouldn't want to bet on him this year. He's looking all right. I mean, I'd probably be willing to – I mean, that's – see, that's top-tier kicker money, though. So, like, why even pay him now when you could just find someone in free agency or just re-sign him anyways? There's a chance we choke the season away. We didn't. We get the home field advantage, but we have to play the Lions anyways, who ended up getting Rashawn Gary. Uh, let's take a look at the season, 10-7. and seven. Uh, You know, kind of a bunch of losses in the middle, and then, you know, did enough to win all the way through, and we're able to actually uh, get back to the playoffs. Barely, may I add you, but let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, Tyler Van... Ooh, okay, 36 touchdowns, 13 picks, but 5,300 yards rushing... You know, Dalvin Cook's playing really well. I'm surprised, uh, you know, that he ever dropped in Dev. You know, he's probably going to do it again this season. Judy's got to go to Superstar. Jefferson could drop in Dev because the touchdowns are low. Yards aren't amazing. Walton was good, though. Irv was better. Still going to let him go, though. O-line was a little worse. Uh, and then sack totals, 12.5, 9, 7.5. I mean, kind of what you expected, but was hoping one of these edge rushers were going to kill it. And, wow, we should have paid Rodrigo. That is a year. That is a very good year. Awards, I'm trying to think. Probably best wide receiver with Judy and probably it, to be honest. As, uh, no, we didn't even win it. But number two is still Pro Bowl level. Uh, and the Lions with a good a couple of awards. Of course, the Panthers also there. So maybe their awards showed up as well. And I just couldn't tell the difference because it's like literally the same. Oh, and by the way, I did change the playbook to Atlanta the last four weeks. So we would have missed the playoffs with a god tier team because of the playbooks. Did I say the play we're gonna miss the playbooks because I'm um, the playoffs, you know, because of the bad playbooks. And like I don't want <laughs> What an ending to the rebuild, I'll tell ya. This is maybe I should have just put the Vikings playbooks back on for the actual like playoffs to see if we earn this win or not. So we'll probably do that for the next game, but look at the difference, like just you just go off because of playbooks and it's just so annoying and i know people are you know not a lot of you guys because i know a lot of other uh you know content creators do the exact same they put on decent playbooks to try and win um and those videos obviously get a lot of views too way even more than mine uh but you know i am trying to accommodate some of the people that are you know the, the small minority that are kind of like hey you know it'd be kind of cool to see you win it with their actual playbooks but Man, I'm telling you, it's it's really rigged against you in this because it's just there's a reason why the same teams win despite the fact that uh, you know their rosters aren't even that great. Justin Jefferson, four trucking and whatnot, Jesus. But here's the divisional the game we lost a bunch of times in going against Philadelphia, who we actually lost to as well. We're gonna go back to the Vikings, assuming I remember what the hell it was. I think it was. Uh, Crap, what was it? I think it was multiple zone run. Guarantee this is going to lead to a fifth season, but it is what it is. Here we go. Potential pain. We do stop them. They, oh, no. We are left to right. Okay, fair enough. We'll take it. Of course, it's all tied up anyways. 14 to 7. 14 to 14. Offense only getting three, but it's still a lead. They're going to take the lead back, though, in the second half and extend it. We're now down by 11. Down by three. Up by four. Defense holds. We're going to win. We'll take it. Of course, the Eagles are a pretty good team now. I don't know what their quarterback is or who their quarterback is. Uh, Anthony, okay. So, I mean, this was a big win. This was an important one, obviously, but this was a skillful win. They are as good as they uh, appear and maybe even better. Jalen Waddell, A.J. Brown still there. Gasicki, Devontae Smith, Bigsby. They've got a sick offense defensively. Ojulari, a hero. No interceptions. Championship back-to-back -back years. 
Tyler Van Dyke with uh, a very good rating. I think he's an 89 overall. Pretty good. Bernie. Let's go with the power move. I would obviously go power move every day of the week. I don't care how big and slow he is. You get block shed with power move as well, but man, he's a uh, tank. Denise. Whoa. Huh? Holy crap. Look at that upgrade. Five short, three to freaking catching. Short route sucks on him. His release is actually getting there, though. Come on, dude. Let us get a Super Bowl trip. It's the Buccaneers again. No. We. I really want to just put the damn playbook on, bro. I really do. I really do. They did have to play in the, the wild card, but once again, two teams that aren't really like, you know. I mean, I don't know the rosters, but probably not offensive firepower, you know, powerhouses. So I'm not sure, but one overall lower than them. Please, for the love of G's, let us in. Come on, with the Vikings playbook as well. Defense is helping, but offense kind of struggling early. 10 to 0, 17 to 0. Keep it up. Offense giving up the ball, but that's okay. Right before half, looking good. 24 to 6, 31 to 6. Of course, we do have the Steelers defense on, but I don't know. Maybe we just need more patience. But hey, hold on there. I mean, we got to this point. Obviously, the first game we had the, the Falcons playbook on and definitely showed. But we are in the Super Bowl with the Vikings of all teams. A team that, like, literally gets shafted by EA for I don't even know how many years in a row now in Sim. With their playbook. I mean, once again, I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it was multiple zone. And at least the right playbook, you know. The playbook does matter probably just as much, if not more, than the actual scheme itself. I'll show you guys real quick. And I was talking continuously there. My editing ain't that good. So, I mean, if you think I made a cut in between. I guess it wouldn't be that hard to do, to be fair. But I didn't. <laughs> I think it was multiple zone. Even if it wasn't, it's... I've never seen it to be good. I always went with either spread or vertical zone offense. And, of course, the Chiefs. Let's take a look at any potential dev ups we had. I'm trying to think. Quarterback may have even dropped in dev, to be honest. Didn't. Cook goes down in dev, but of course, Judy goes up. Cook obviously does not deserve to drop in dev. He had another really good year. Nearly five yards per carry, a bunch of touchdowns, about 1,500 yards. I don't know what they're going to buy, but I, I think the yardage was good enough, in my opinion. Let's take a look at defense now. Daniil's back to X Factor. Wagner's back to X Factor. And nobody dropped in dev. That is, I mean, about as good of a win as you can ask for at this point. This is a good team. The Chiefs are a good team. Let's find out who's better. Also, I kind of want to take a look at that wide receiver. You know, they, they did draft the wide receiver we're looking at. Not that I have any regrets or anything. I like who we got. Uh, where is he? McPhee, 99 speed, 97 excel, but normal. Okay, so unless he dropped in dev, which I don't think he would have. He's not that old in the league, right? This is like his second year probably. Oh, he's his rookie actually. What am I thinking about? I didn't even... That's bad because I didn't even like end recording. This is all one recording. So like my memory is just thrown out the window. Although this, this season really did feel long. Trent McDuffie's an X Factor. To be able to get to X Factor and then keep it. When you start off as like a lower overall star, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? Of course, speaking of crazy, the start to the game, not crazy good. Dalvin with a nice run, down seven. They've been in a lead the whole time, though. Uh-oh, this isn't looking good. We need to score. Third and one, what do we got? Nothing, and they're probably going to kick a field goal, aren't they? You just can't do that. Like, I just, you just can't do that. I'm sorry, you cannot. I think you honestly just dragged this whole playoff for Judy. I mean, Judy is my guy, in fairness. He is my guy. Wow, the quarterback sucking hard. Like, so hard. One of those videos that I've been hearing about. Down 11, kind of need a miracle. Even after that, we get a huge play down to the one, and we actually go back so far. It's fourth and goal? We were at the freaking one. How? With this offense? Their defense isn't that good? This is crazy, dude. This is a really stupid play by us, but it is what it is. And it's a dot to the speedster Walton. Do you really want me to go for two? I don't think so. I'd rather have the game do it. And we do get the two-point conversion. Seven minutes with a pick. And we're now up by four. Risking it all, potentially paying off. If you stay on the field, you win the Super Bowl. Third and five. Did they get it? 
One yard short, dude. Nah, you gotta punt it. You can't. That it just... Nah, you can't. You gotta punt it. And we win by four. I don't care if I had to go for it on fourth and 11 or whatever. Fourth and four as well. I have done more for less. Like, I've done more to help the team win and lose the game in the in general. I don't care how it happens. The Vikings winning a Super Bowl is a damn modern-day miracle. This is literally like landing on the moon for the first time. Because it's literally landing on the trophy for the first... I don't know. But, of course, a really solid team. Kirk Cousins wasn't a part of it. I Like I said, I kind of wanted Kirk Cousins to work out. But, in the end... You know, it didn't really matter too much either way. We would have been able to afford another contract for Kirk. You know, we were kind of hovering around 30 mil leftover cap like every single season. So it's not like we were screwed if we kept him, but he just didn't deserve to be kept. You know, he never did enough for me to make the argument that upgrading the dev or his ratings was fair. So it is what it is, but it's another rebuild where we have Aaron Donald uh, on the team. So... You know, take it how you will. Obviously, Aaron Donald may move around teams. I don't think he would, but maybe, I guess. Of course, uh, you know, quarterback was good. Technically better because he didn't throw a pick, which, of course, was right at the end, like Mahomes' is anti-clutch. Uh, looking at the defensive numbers, sack totals. You know, wow, there's a lot of pressure from both sides. Andre Sisko, ground him in free agency because I felt like we should have some decent depth. And he may have been the reason we won the bowl. Oh, my. Of course, I'll show you guys, you know, we didn't force any wins or anything like that. I don't always show, but, you know, sometimes I remember to do it, especially my more proud rebuilds where, you know, it's this is a tough team. Even the Bills. The, the Bills and the Vikings have been kind of like the two most disrespected teams in the game. Of course, the Bills probably a little bit more undeserving as they're, like, actually one of the best teams in the league. There's no, like, potential question marks. They're there. Uh, you know, any little, like, one kind of small thing you change in the postseason. Like I said, I know this is, like, completely off topic, but I think the Rams and the Bengals were lucky. I think, even though they deserve to be there, one little thing in either of their type of games throughout the year, and they could have lost, you know? So, the Bills are obviously one of those teams in real life, whereas the Vikings maybe aren't, but they have that potential specifically in the game. But usually they're, like, a 5-10, to 10, like, 5-7 to seven or 5-8 to eight win team. But here, they are Super Bowl champions. Glad to see a successful rebuild here is uh, Justin Jefferson. He's just insane. He's just kind of a goddamn dude. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. Of course, Dalvin Cook is still really good, even though he's 30, 31 now. Um, you know, very good player. Like to balance him out a little bit more in the Vikings franchise, though. Uh, what are his abilities anyways? Is it actually Jukebox and an Energizer? I don't remember. In my, I think that actually is what his abilities are, so kind of sucks. Can't really get him power move stuff, but he's not really built to be that. But if we can get a stiff arm and all that up, that'd be nice. Jay Judy, you know, he came here with really bad release, and he's he's looking really good right now. Looking really good. Of course, the quarterback matters because he's obviously the engineer of this train. Throw on the run, play action, break sack, all suck. But those are all ratings that really don't matter if you believe in your pocket passing and Obviously, with his speed, he shouldn't believe in anything else. Very good, except for short, but 84 short accuracy is probably all you need anyways. Irv Smith, we'll take a look at. He's an 87 overall. We were about to let him go, and I mean, kind of see why, right? Like, he's good, but is he really worth, like, what appears to be 10 mil per year, especially when you have to pay this quarterback probably, like, 50 per? Uh, Ezra got to a 92 overall. Once again, we only run sliders about 150. I also don't know how this is a 92 overall. He literally has, like... A few ratings at 90 something yet his pass block power and run block power are awful which he's an interior blocker so that's like the one thing you need to get developed Dara saw obviously uh the opposite which he needs to be a finesse guy because he's an edge so thankfully uh <laughs> it doesn't matter too much in sim because yeah uh, of course it probably doesn't matter too much in sim because every team does this but obviously eric mccoy he's a freak would never let him go I've always tried to, like, acquire him one way or another, and it just never has happened, but maybe one day. One day. Brian O'Neill, looking pretty good here. He's actually a bit balanced, and finesse is his strong suit, which is what you need. Thankfully, somebody got the memo. Uh, Walton, who came up with that huge third and pretty much 11 for the touchdown. Super fast, super high potential. And then defensively, looking at some of the guys here. Obviously, Andrew Booth is an 89 overall, going to be some sort of man god. And he has 97 man coverage. That's kind of freakly. That is kind of busted. 
uh, every single time I had to go freaking defense. Of course, Wooden, decent overall with very good power move and his block shed's 80. So he didn't get a single block shed ever since we drafted him, but power move is great, which is what we need the most because we have this gigantic man here playing nose, and then obviously Aaron Donald is, you know, he is who he is. He literally is great at everything. Newsom finally starting to develop a little late, but zone coverage corner, so you have a little bit of everything. And then what else do we have? Some defenders on the linebacker side. Asamoa, who's always kind of a backup to a really good linebacker. So he's had a pretty generous career so far. Pretty nice career. Getting pretty good with that coverage, too. Looking at Ojulari now. Waited a year, but he's actually developed a little bit here. You know, 93 power move, 80 block shed. He's really solid, actually. And then defensively on the safety side, don't really care too much about McKinney because he was already developed before he got here and never developed further than that, really. And then Lewis Seen, really not developed well. Very athletic, but his zone coverage sucks. His tackling's good. It seems like he's more of like a run support guy, 86. I let the AI upgrade because, once again, these like three, four-hour recordings would be way longer if I manually upgraded every player. You just can't do it. You simply can't. It's just, it can't be done. But regardless, that is going to be our realistic style rebuild of the Minnesota Vikings. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Of course, if you enjoyed this, maybe leave a like. Appreciate it a ton. If you didn't, but you got to this point of the video, that's really weird, but you're also welcome to dislike it. Maybe subscribe if you're new. We do a ton of franchise stuff, including rebuilds, actual franchise with Seahawks. And speaking of Vikings... Probably our Minnesota Vikings online user franchise soon enough. Uh, if you're not new, appreciate your continued support so, so much. And uh, maybe suggest a team you'd like to see next. I'm kind of thinking, like I said, the Seahawks. But we could do like the Bears just to knock off the NFC North. There's a bunch of teams that, you know, a lot of people haven't done yet. And, you know, maybe you guys want to see them. Maybe a little bit better of a team like the, the Colts or something. I don't know. Twitter.com slash care for tweeters. And uh, second channel, PCare plays for uh you know the non-madden stuff which hopefully by now there's been at least an upload since you know took that big break because of madden 22 uh, or 23 the the end of madden 22 where i did upload a bunch of videos as well on the main i was uploading uh, nighthawks every single day and the last thing would be to let me know what kind of like maybe trade targets player or position wise you guys think we should go for early on in our vikings franchise once again it's a realistic ish franchise where like the gameplay is not going to be like unrealistic but some of the trades might be like they're going to be fair because we have a voting system but like you know we could see like us trading i won't because the money but like we could trade adam thielen off which the vikings in real life seem like they're he's going to retire there they love him but like we could do something like that where like we'll get good value or fair value but the actual players themselves moving might be unrealistic so pretty much nobody is off limits but at the same time you got to realize like you know, nobody's going to be trading Patrick Mahomes or, you know, some people will be like, hey, there's this guy named Isaiah Simmons you should check out. It's like everyone in the league knows. If they're if they're that guy, we literally all know and nobody's trading them. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya.